Hey guys, happy Thursday. Uh, today is Thursday, uh, May 21st, and it's time for another art throwdown. Hey Phil, hey Russ. Come on in everybody. Letting Russ into the crafting clubhouse here. And uh, we will get started soon. I see Jim, I see Ashley. Hey guys, good evening. Hello. Hello. It's a very nice leaf you've got there. Thank you. <laughs> I like the colors. Those colors blended well. And I see Nan. Oh. Hey, Nan. Anna has joined. Welcome, Anna. Hey. Hey, guys. All right. Awesome. So what you got for us today? Mel for Zoe's here. Hello. Welcome. Patty from Southern Stamp Queen is here. Welcome. Nice. We got a whole crew here tonight. That's excellent. Thanks for joining, everybody. That's pretty good for a Thursday night. I think so. No, I, I do declare that is a very good group of people. Um, so I have a... Um, oh, Jennifer is here. Hey, Jennifer. I have uh, two projects, and I have one project for real. Hey, Carrie. Um, that I'm going to be working on. And then I have kind of like another future state project that I'm going to talk about, but I'm not going to do it because I have to teach myself how to do it first. So um, shockingly, I have um, some bits and pieces in here to make another dog postcard. So I'm going to keep working through my scraps. Um, the real thing I did want to show you guys because most of it came in the mail today. I have a ton of these El Cheapo acrylic paints that uh, I got for like a buck from uh, Amazon. So I'm dragging them all over. And um, yeah, I got, um, I got all of these and they were like a dollar each. And so um, I don't know, maybe people didn't like these colors, but um, they sound pretty nice to me. Bright green. We have, um, oh wait, this is glitter glue. Hold on. <laughs> it's not one of them. Uh, we've got real blue. We've got Tangelo. And uh, this one is Bimini blue, uh, real red. And then we've got Concord grape. And then we've got antique white. So um, I also have my ink brayer here, my trusty brayer that I got on, on clearance from Hobby Lobby like a while back. So this thing's been sitting up in my closet for a while. I'm going to finally get that ready. And then I have my jelly plate, which I've got the 8 by 10 inch uh, by Jelly Arts. So I've got this guy too. Um, so this is kind of like future state. Um, I will not probably be doing this tonight. I will be doing postcards, but I'm going to start thinking about um, jelly printing. Oh, and I have um, stencils. I forget where they were. They're here somewhere. But so I have okay. all of the gear. <laughs> okay. Before you move on to your next thing you're going to talk about, do you have an old uh, picture frame or any sheet of glass or maybe PEX glass available? Hmm, maybe? Why do you okay. ask? <laughs> because that's what you're going to need to spread your acrylics so that you can put them onto the jelly roll. I mean, the jelly the jelly plate. Oh, Does that make oh, sense? So okay. you, can put, you can put them on directly uh, and mix them on your jelly plate. Okay. But what people recommend that you do is to put your paints on a different surface like a piece of glass or piece of plastic glass and then brayer it on that and then apply that to the jelly plate. And so then, ah, okay. So you don't, so in some of the tutorials, I've seen people take acrylic paint and just go blah and they just, you can do that as well. Absolutely. They, you know, do this. But so that's interesting that there's a separate surface that people are using for that. So interesting. All right. So, so yeah. So just, I think just I do. Try, apply, just try playing with both ways until you find a way that you like. Um, and the only other thing I'll mention too, I have like all of these paper scraps. Um, they are loose leaf. My daughter had me put together an address book for her and these are all the cuttings from that. So it was just basically like lined paper. I was going to start with like things like this and I've got other like printer paper cuttings that... Um, I wasn't going to use anyway, so I might just experiment with these to start with and see if, um, if I get good at it, I might start doing it on um, better quality paper. So that's what's in my head for the future project anyway. 
So, yeah. <laughs> so, first of all, don't use up all your scraps because you're going to need them for one of the future uh, postcard challenges, just to let you know. You have no idea how many scraps I okay. own, though. Let's see. Because I think one of the fun ones I'm thinking about doing is called a uh, scrap collage, to where you can use nothing wider than one inch piece of, of anything. Okay, so the I've got can... all of these. Yeah. Because right. uh, you and Ashley have motivated me to do uh, a scrap collage. Yay! So, oh, that's going to be so fun! Yeah. All right. Well, sign me up. I will definitely participate in a scrap collage. Yes, that's right, Phil. I did make a, um, I did make, I made a, an address book um, for my daughter and it's about this big and it's, I took acrylic, I took like a dark blue and then I used one of those white um, Uniball Signo pens and I drew stars all over it and then we Mod Podged it and then we painted glitter on it. I'm like, it's perfect for an elementary school aged kid. So she loves it. It's her favorite thing. So it's about this big. It's square. So it came out well. Um, and these are all the cuttings. All these line pieces are all the cuttings from that. So yeah, that's my plan anyway for now. And while we're sending out shout outs, I wanted to send a shout out to Jennifer who finished her pizza uh, birthday card. If you haven't seen it yet, it is the cutest thing, absolutely cutest thing. Go to her feed and look at it. Uh, it is the absolutely cutest thing. And it's a perfect thing for a 10 year old birthday. So I just Wonderful. wanted to send that out. Yep. All right. I got to go check on that. And I see Nikki just joined mail slot. So um, hello. Welcome. Cool. All right, so you're going, so you're going to do here. your dog postcard tonight? Is that, is that the main project? Yeah, because I've just, I've got all these scraps and all these stickers and things. So um, I am going to uh, keep working with these. Cool. Yep, yep. So what and you got I'm us? going to, I'm sorry? What have you got for us, man? I'm going to do the, uh, finish working on this uh, watercoloring technique. So I put the base layer down last night. This is where I left the project. And now what I'm going to do is you have two options uh, or uh, several options. One, you can use colored pencil to do an additional layer, but I'm going to use these watercolor pencils, these water soluble pencils uh, to add another layer on top of this particular layer. Uh, that way I can add some dimension. Um, and then if I want to wet it, uh, to disperse the pigment, I can, or I can just leave it as is and treat it like a regular water, uh, like a regular colored pencil. Got it. Very cool. So you're working on that. And um, where's your roommate? Is he still mad? He is upset with you, first of all. Um, and then he's still a little embarrassed. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to uh, uh, bring him out from his. Uh, his uh, moroseness tomorrow <laughs> for the uh, for the uh, postcard challenge announcement. So he won't but be wearing a costume tomorrow at all. He won't, uh, but Darn. he will be wearing his bandana uh, mask because uh, Ashley was asking if he had a mask. Okay. So he's taken his bandana and has turned it into a mask for Ashley. And he's gonna right. if I can if I can get him off the bed, I will uh, show him tomorrow. Cool. But he's a little embarrassed. And I think your analogy was absolutely perfect. Pam has joined. Hello, Pam. And Vino your, as well. Hey, Vino. Uh, is that um, it was like putting a cabbage patch into a Barbie costume. <laughs> so uh, we, I actually had to measure him today. And he was a little embarrassed for me to measure him. But he is a size 19 chest. And so stomach. I'm thinking he would fit into like build a bear clothes. Like he seems he might. To be I don't know. I'm not. I'm not size. familiar with any of that stuff. So, um, <laughs> so the thing that they sent was like for a chihuahua. Oh my god! And he god. couldn't even get his head through it. And so, uh, so yeah, he's he's a little embarrassed. So I'm trying to coax him out of his, you know, his moroseness. Russell, you have not lived until you have turned the handle on the Build-A-Bear um, fluff machine. Just saying. No, I, actually, I have never done that. Um, I guarantee there is at least one person 
in this audience of viewers right now that has like had to go through the Build-A-Bear experience. Raise your hand if that's you, because there's always one in every bunch. I don't know why. Rockabilly has joined. Welcome. Hello. But yeah, and so it was it was a little a little embarrassing. So uh I see no one's fessing. No one's no one's fessing up to it, but there's at least one person here who has had to oh, Rockabilly. <laughs> <laughs> she, or maybe Patty. I'm not sure if they're waving or if they're confessing to the build a bear. No, I think I think they're waving hello. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Oh, like, Pan careful, has. This is a slippery slope. Like I might start talking about Beanie Babies or something. Some weird, random pop culture topic. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Took my nieces. It was horrific. <laughs> oh, man. Don't they have like a song or a chant or something that they do when they're cranking the crank and they're like filling the 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 animal carcass with like stuffing? <laughs> oh, gosh. And Patty still, they, they still have theirs. <laughs> Yeah, I put that, I think that's kind of like, I feel like Beanie Babies were the tulip craze of the 90s, almost. And then, I don't know, maybe early 2000s, was it, that Build-A-Bear came along? Something like that? What's the American Girl thing? Is that something totally different? Yes, that's a totally okay. separate, um, that's a totally separate company. And um, those dolls, so those dolls, if I had to compare it, like, they are much more educational. They're based on... Um, a bunch of different book series for historical fiction. So um, there was, when I was growing up, we had one, there was a girl from like uh, 1854 and there was a girl from 1904 and there was a girl from 1944 and so forth and so on and, and um, 1794. So each, each, um, each character, they were all female characters. So each girl um, had a book series. I think there was a minimum of six books per set for each character for each of those time frames but it was all historical fiction and then um they started to create um there was there were dolls there was there's a clothing line for the dolls and um there were like accessories they were kind of they were definitely on the pricier side well that's what that's what patty just said they're super expensive yes. dolls yes yes and the only way that i know about them is because they did a couple for frozen so they dressed the a couple of them up for like Frozen. Oh. And they also did Builder Bears that did Frozen as well. So you, you're saying you've been holding out on us. <laughs> I've seen them. I didn't know what they were. Um, so you didn't actually make the Builder Bear. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you're like, I was just kind of in the vicinity of the Builder Bear. Okay. And just so you guys know, um, I'm not reading the feed. I'm being self-absorbed right now because I'm gluing scraps. <laughs> so, well, that's my job. I'm not looking up read. right now. <laughs> Sorry. Landy is, well, has joined. Welcome, Landy. Hello. Good evening. There was a live show about the girls I saw. Um, uh. Jennifer, to what... The American what? Girl Dolls? Oh, I don't know. A live show? Was it like a theatrical experience kind of thing? Because it's interesting. My kids really um, have not taken to that collection of dolls, which I'm okay with because, again, it's expensive. So, like, if you guys want to play with Barbies, then play Barbies. I don't care. But aren't Barbies expensive as well? When you get all the, you know, the the vans and the shopping centers and all that it kind of stuff. It just depends. Um, depends on how much gear your Barbies need. If you buy the Barbie Dream House, you know, the yeah, it gets up there. Or you have to buy their um, their camper. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it that adds up after a while too. All the Barbie accessories and 
all that stuff. That is true. But even back in the 80s, I thought that the American Girl doll, like the outfits and the accessories and all that, I thought that was kind of pricey, even back for those times. Like, I remember a doll outfit being 40 bucks back in the late Oh, really? 80s. Wow. Yes. Yeah, which, you know, it was a, like a lot of allowance money to save over time. My grandmother used to make and sell uh, little outfits for Barbies. Oh, really? Yeah. She lived in a very small, small Hispanic town. So, um, you know, everyone sewed and did that kind of thing. And so... Uh, but she also had, have you ever heard of these Barbie cakes? Yes. Yes. It's where you take the, make the giant skirt and you put the Barbie doll in the center and like the cake becomes like this giant skirt, but right. you're eating, but it's really cake. Yeah. Yes. So she was, she, she would um, sell those things as well. We have a bakery actually one town over that makes those. And people, I, I don't know, people must buy them because I always see one on display when we go in there. So I guess that's, for some folks, um, that's still a thing. The Barbie cake. Um, Mail Slot said she loved Barbies. Very empowering for women in the 60s. Um, they were doctors and architects and pilots. Very cool. Agreed. It it It, it had... I'm not denigrating the the system um, because for some young girls, it was the only way of seeing themselves other than what the situations were, especially in the 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, it was, uh, you know, very aspiring for some young girls back then when they didn't have a lot of those kind of role models that were publicly out there. So I, I absolutely get that. And even back in the 80s, I remember, I think the slogan was like, we girls can do anything. And that was, it was always part of the jingle on the commercials. I just remember the controversy. There was apparently one Barbie that said, you know, math is hard. Yes. And, um, and it was a big deal. And that Barbie, just FYI, is worth a butt ton of money if you can get your hands on it. So I think I think Mattel very swiftly pulled that one off the market um, after the controversy hit. So I think it was a limited production run. So therefore, it is somewhat highly collectible among the Barbies. That's my understanding anyway. Patty says her Barbies lived in a box. Hang on. These, these comments are gold. I'm going back up. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, so Jennifer said there was um, at the Fifth Ave location. Okay, so that's their main flagship location in New York. There was a live show about the characters from American Girls, and actually Jennifer saw it. Um, every time I have tried in the past to go in that store, it is always closed. And so, um, I guess that is why that is because every time I have ever traveled to New York, I always, I, I walk everywhere. I walk all around and like, I'll eat, um, falafels or I'll find a place that has really good shawarma. And then by the time I'm done stuffing myself, I always go to that location and it's always closed. So I don't know what their hours are, but I always seem to miss it. I've never actually been inside. So Frank has joined. Welcome, Frank. Rockabilly Nick says, I would have been that Barbie because math is hard. <laughs> Me too. I was I was that Barbie in real life. I was like, math. <laughs> I love math. 
Have you all seen, as Patty wants to know, there are Instagram pages where people pose Barbies. No, that's a thing. I mean, I guess anything is a thing on here, but I've, no, I'm not familiar with that. Um, hello, Frank. Frank has joined. Uh, there's a there's a gentleman who does um, the Funko Pop bobblehead things, um, and he puts them in like nature scenes and action scenes. So there is a person that does that, but um, I was not aware of the of the Barbie one, the Barbie poses. Oh, they closed the Fifth Avenue location. Now it's by Rock Center. Okay, I think that's, yeah, I think the Rock Center was the one that I've been trying to go to for like the last, I don't know, two years. Something I like thought that. the Fifth Avenue was, uh, never, never mind. <laughs> I'm getting Build-A-Bear and I'm getting uh, American, American Girl mixed up in terms of locations. I don't think we have a Build-A-Bear in New York anymore. Oops. All right. Sorry for the wobbly camera, guys. Come on. Get it together. I know. I know. See what happens when you stop being self-absorbed? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. If you stop being self-absorbed, your devices and their little prop-up things start to fall over. <laughs> See? This is why I do postcards. <laughs> like, I can't glue and read at the same time. It just doesn't work for me, man. Yeah, Frank says he thinks Builder Bear is defunct. And I think so. I think they have like an like an outlet mall in New Jersey or something like that. But I thought that the uh, store location was actually closed. Oh, so maybe they just. I mean, I it used to be a big thing in the brick and mortar malls, but I mean, just given what's happened to retail the last few years, I'm not honestly surprised. It's not terribly surprising. Yeah, the FAA. Closing of the FAO Schwartz was major. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, yes. Yes. And Toys R Us, too. Like, you know, I was really bummed about that. And I know they're starting to come up with, like, some alternative, like, retail strategies to be in the stores. Uh, but, you know, I miss it. I miss the, I, you know, a kid in the but 80s. Like, that was our jam. That... We would go to that thing, and um, all the new Mario games would be out for the eight bit. I mean, it was it was a for for me growing up in like middle of nowhere where, where we did have a Toys R Us. It was a huge deal, big big deal. But I think there's an FAA Schwartz by Rockefeller Center, though, if I'm not mistaken. They reopened it, I think. Yeah. They, first, they closed them all. I. Th thought and then people freaked out and then they got really super nostalgic and then they reopened i think they opened that one back up yeah i like to use i used to like the the ferris wheel at toys r us <laughs> did you did you ride the ferris wheel Russ? no no i just thought it was cool you walk in you know in times square and a big old ferris wheel in the center of in the center of times square no, I don't. That store is not there anymore, right? No, it is now a Gap, Ugh. or Old Navy, one of those two, because they're right next to each other. Really? Yeah. Oh boy. Well, I got to make some plans to go back down there. I got to go to that Muji store now that I know that it exists. It's a big deal. I cut this off of a pen pal letter. I don't know why, but I love this dog's face. Like, it has attitude. It's like, what? I'm going to put this on, I think. Actually, maybe that'll be the theme of this postcard. Dogs with attitude. I get all the... That's a Shiba things. Unu. Shiba Unu, I think. Yes, I think it is. That's the Japanese dog. That is the national dog of Japan. I like his little dog eyebrows. Look at his dog brows. Aren't they cute? Yeah. I swear, are you still painting or are you commentating down there? No, I was. I did another layer with uh, watercolor pencils. Mm. Um, and then I uh, spread that pigment around with uh, some water 
Um, and now I'm going to just use regular crayon pencils nice. if I can find them on my table. I like that green. It's very springy looking. I like that blend. Looking good. Ooh, looky here. And I've also got a Snoopy that I clipped off of um, some memo paper that one of my spot pals gave me. So got to have Snoopy on here. I do have to say that I've been really impressed with the quality of the projects that people have been doing during our shout outs, yes. our, our throwdowns. Yes. And it's kind of funny. It's like, you know, we focus on our projects and I know people work on stuff, but it's not until after the fact that I surf around and I'm like, oh man, look at all the stuff they made. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, it is, it is a beautiful thing. I always love looking at what other people made what people were working on. It's all goodness. And I'm very happy to report that uh, Jim's coloring book finally has arrived. Wonderful. Yeah. So maybe now he'll grace us with a color rendition of one of my pages one of these days no pressure <laughs> absolutely no pressure i'm always interested to see how people color the pages you know I, I usually not don't share what my renderings of the pages because then people think oh that's how it's supposed to be what's what's supposed to look like so i tend not to share um my coloring of my own work uh, but uh, I'm always interested in seeing how other people color pages for my coloring book. How many, within that nature coloring book, how many would you say, how many of the pages had that, like that matte black background? I want to say maybe eight, somewhere around there, I think. Okay. Because I had to fight against that. Right. Uh, <laughs> I remember you saying that yeah. like that was not your preferred um right. your preferred page style layout. But I actually for anybody that is doing that in the in the in the um the adult coloring books that is my preferred go to if I'm going to take a coloring page and I'm going to make it into an envelope because once you add that coloring it makes for such an interesting design. Well, the, um, the story behind that is that um, I had to rework a couple of those because they wanted to do a package deal uh, with these new metallic pencils that they were releasing. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they wanted to do a package deal of the metallic colored pencils uh, and the coloring book. And so uh, one of the ways that they could do that was to have those black background pages. So, so it was all a marketing ploy to sell more stuff. <laughs> Isn't it always though? Yeah. Well, I'm very happy to report that is the top selling adult coloring book for Crayola. Nice. Uh, and I have three of the top five uh, adult coloring books for Crayola. So, and that Nature's Escape is in its fifth printing right now. So when was that? When was the first printing? Do you recall? I don't, I don't, I would have to look it up, but it's been a while. It's been a few years at least. Yeah. Wow. Well, it's funny. Like as soon as you said that about the metallic, um, the metallic uh, marker products and, the page with the black on it. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just go for this. Cause it was the very first page in the coloring book that I colored. And, um, yeah, it just, it worked really well for my purposes. Cause you know, predictably I made an envelope out of it, but, but yeah, if you put enough color and contrast and, you know, bright poppy colors, it just, it makes for such a cool contrast when you go to make it into something.
So your card is coming along. Yes, I like that is. those backgrounds. Of course, I'm I'm crazy for polka dot anything, but uh, oh, I didn't realize that. Um, but yeah, we yeah. got some backgrounds going on here. A lot of these things are clipped off, with the exception of this guy. He's a he's a brand new sticker slap. Most of these other things came from paper that was uh, cuttings from other things. These both came from um, an envelope. This came from a piece of memo paper from a swap pail on swap bot. So it's a pretty wide variety of like upcycled stuff. As well, nothing goes to waste in your household. Well, none if of the it's... paper goods do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, that's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like to waste paper goods, especially if they're cool looking. I'm like, I can reuse this. I'm going to make something out of it. I think I'm going to send your box on Saturday because I have to go into the city on Saturday. Right on. Cool. Well, I will keep an eye out for it next week. Oh, I just to let you know, I invited Lance Bass to our, our <laughs> throwdown. <laughs> so I'm hoping one day he's, he's going to surprise us. Dude, we got we crafty lumberjacks came in here one night. They did. I was like, oh, my God. Now, okay, if if Plaid ever came in, I would, like, scream. <laughs> like, I love your Mod Podge. <laughs> Paper Jewels Raj has joined. Welcome. Hello. He is an author of a coffee book table, uh, Postcards from the Raj, uh, that uh, Frank uh, reviewed. Uh, and I have since purchased. Uh, I've um, enjoyed his postings of um, of his uh, postcards. Excellent. From colonial India. So. I think this is our largest group that we've had. We're up to 14 people. <laughs> I'm like, woo! <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Ashley says, because of your inspiration, she kept a tag from the celery because it has a cool graphic. <laughs> okay, you guys. All right, I'm camera up. Check this out. There are people out there, and like, I don't, I don't know that these things exist until I see them randomly in my feed, but there is at least one person out in the universe today who collects the stickers off of oranges, and I don't remember this person's name, but they made a very famous print of this thing. And like, it's a poster. It's like a full size poster that you frame and you can put on your wall, but it's all these tiny orange stickers from around the world. And I'm like, that is such a specific collection of items, my God. But apparently it's a thing. So, you know, I don't think, I don't think that's that weird. I mean, let's see, I've got- Nan uh... kept one for her pineapple. <laughs> this a came off from of her a pineapple. bag. I kept this cause, um... You know, it was pretty and it was some packaging or something. So um, I kept that. Yeah. I even have, look at, this is part of a greeting card. I kept this. It's a Chihuahua's feet because um, the rest of him became uh, a postcard. <laughs> so, no, I, uh, that's Nan not said, weird uh, at all. Anna said that she kept an avocado tag. Um, Sweet. Rockabilly keeps all the cutie stickers from her Clementines. See, that is a thing. A lot of people like that because they're just those little orange stickers are like graphically appealing. And then uh, Patty says that if we ever need entree to gr uh, Lance Bass, that her uh, her niece knows. No, her her son is friends with his niece. Um, well, we know he plays with Mod Podge because there is an Instagram post recently of him playing with Mod Podge, and it looked like he was Mod Podging a. A puzzle or something. Something like that. So, you know, I'm just saying, like, if a celebrity were wanted to come into the art throwdown and make stuff with us, like, I wouldn't say no, you know. I'd be okay well, with that. I don't think that. you can. <laughs> I'd be okay with that. I'd be like, eh, I guess. I guess you can come in. Patty says, uh, Lance Bass's sister lives in Brandon. I, I'm assuming that's Florida or Mississippi. No, that's Mississippi. Yeah. Uh, and makes cakes. Oh, interesting. I learned so much like from you guys. 
So many fun random facts. All right, I'm going to point my camera back down because I'm done reacting to that, but no, it's a big deal. Let's see. Um, yes, fruit and vegetable sticker confessional. Like, <laughs> Asha's like, I'm not alone. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> I mean, I even collect the packaging for some of my kids' toys because it's like sparkly or has glitter. And I'm like, ooh, it's so pretty. I have to keep this and make something out of it someday. You folks are just weird. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to just Jennifer leave it keeps, at that. Okay, here's a confessional. Jennifer keeps the netting from the Clementines for pressure printing and collagraphs. What's a collagraph? Collagraphs. I've never heard of that term. I, I can see using it for um, like a putting it on a jelly roller or on your on your jelly jelly plate. I think that's the right Jelly word for it. Then you take your brayer yeah. and be like, Lah. and they could make like a really cool design with your packaging, like for um, netting. I can see that making a really, really cool uh, print, jelly print. I'm still learning the terminology for this thing. So I'm like, you know, the plate, the thing, you know. We know what you mean. That's all that counts. All right. No one else has to know. So Jennifer, I want to know what a collagraph is because that sounds really interesting. And Creekside Trading Post just joined. Hello. We say hi to everybody that comes in. So hello and welcome to tonight's art throwdown. Uh, Russ is watercoloring and oops, if I can get my camera to stop wobbling, I am making um, a collage postcard dog themed because I have a lot of dog stickers and um, dog jokes and just other random dog paper scraps in my collection that I didn't realize I had until recently. And just to let you know, this is a trick of the trade that Pam taught me. She puts, um, when she goes to these group swaps, uh, these group um, uh, group meetings for crafts, for like, uh, you know, markers and, and coloring and stuff like that, she puts a piece of washi tape on all of her markers so she can identify her markers uh, so they're, they, they're different from anybody else's. So I took that idea and labeled all of my pencils uh, with their style number so that if I need to reorder, I can, uh, because as you can see, that printing is so small. Um, and because it's in gold, mm -hmm. it's hard to read and you have to have, you know, your magnifying glasses on, uh, to do that. So, uh, so that's a shout out to Pam who taught me that little trick to, to label your products with, uh, tape so that, uh, you can, uh, distinguish them from others. Got it. Now that is an excellent idea. Because she goes to conventions and stuff. She's that kind of good. Okay, so I want to know more about these. <laughs> I didn't know that that stuff existed, and it sounds awesome and amazing. Yeah, she goes to stamping conventions and learns techniques. And uh, I think at some time, if I'm not mistaken, Pam, I think you taught as well. Uh, but um, hmm. um, but she goes to these big uh, uh, Copic um, marker conventions and stamp conventions and things like that. And so, uh, so what it happens is every, it's just a big crafting area. Oh my God. And, um, <laughs> and they have all these tables and you go with friends or you meet friends or you convene there. Um, she went one with, it was a Disney girls theme. 
So her and her friends went to Disney to, the, to go to this coloring convention. And I was so disappointed because I wasn't invited. And she goes, but you're not a girl. I'm like, well, that that's questionable. But uh, anyway, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, so uh, that's my shout out to Pam. Wow. I didn't realize that that was a, that was a thing. Yeah. Pam says her children call them adult daycare. <laughs> <gasps> oh my God. I would totally go to <laughs> That sounds amazing. That just, and I assume that that's like any other convention where they've got like a giant hall of merchandise that you can just fawn over and buy and yeah. Yeah, they're, they're sponsored by all of these different companies that deal with those particular things. Like all the marker companies go, uh, all of the uh, rubber stamp companies and acrylic stamp companies and uh, you know, they all go there and they offer demonstrations and they give swag bags out and, oh my you know, uh, and you go and learn techniques and all those kind of things. And it, they really are, as Pam says, quite fun. And they have them throughout the United States. So it's you can turn it into a vacation and everyone can meet there, you know, for, you know, for a weekend. Some of them go for days. You know, so that uh, sounds like a phenomenal boondoggle. I'm going to have to get me some of that at some point. <laughs> I got to go. I'm like, well, we got to sign out. Got to go to the convention, guys. It's been real. <laughs> well, the thing is, they ha they happen in fun places. I know that they had one in, you know, New Orleans. Oh my god! Uh, they had one in Orlando. Uh, that was part of Disney. So, you know, when you're not doing your art, you can go Disneying, you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so it's it's uh, and they're usually published in all of those kind of magazines that deal with in all those groups either facebook groups or instagram groups that deal with those kinds of arts and crafts kind of adventures so uh, you know like rubber stamping and um, you know any of those art magazines um you know stamping away all those kinds of things so yeah so that's like the commercial underbelly of the art world that i never knew existed <laughs> Yeah, Jennifer says she went to the one in Allentown. I've gone to a, a stamp convention uh, in Pennsylvania somewhere. I don't remember if it was Allentown or not. But we took a um, we took a bus from the ink pad here in New York City, and there were about thirty of us that went on this bus. Uh, and then you go and spend the day at the convention, uh, and then you take the bus back to New York. You know uh, when it closes for the day. And so was this like a philatelist convention type thing? No, no, this is a rubber stamp collection. Oh, rubber uh, stamping, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. Now, stamp conventions are a totally different thing. <laughs> All right, I'm putting my camera up. I want to yeah. talk about this. So that, that exists? That's the thing? Oh, stamp shows? Absolutely. Posted stamp shows? Absolutely. Do people ever get into fights or, you know, like anything like that at those? No, not really. It's just because most of them are vendors, and then you go there specifically for the purpose to find stamps that you're looking for or stamps that you're missing from your collection. You know, um, so yeah. But that's where I've gotten some of the best values of my stamps because you have these people that have thousands and thousands of stamp sheets. Oh you know, my God. Uh, you, yeah. Wholesalers? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Stamps? Postage stamps, yes. Huh. I guarantee you there's one in Boston. There's a stamp association, postage stamp association in there's Boston. There's got to be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's conventions for like every other thing in this city. So I've got to think there's got to be something like that. If you go to stamps.org, which is the American Philatelic Society webpage, mm -hmm. uh, they have all the conventions there. Uh, so you can find out what kind of conventions, because they have, you know, big city, little city, they have statewide, you know, conventions. So if you're interested in postage stamps, you can find that information. It's, it's just right now. And, and Jim says they also have postcard shows as well. Like tourist, postcard conventions, like touristy postcards, like lantern press, all, like all homemade. kinds of postcards, any kind of postcards you've ever thought about wanting. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Clearly I haven't lived because I didn't know any of this stuff existed. Wow. 
Yeah, and so, Penny's I mean, expect- laughing, a stamp fight. I mean, I feel like, you know, each each organization or collection of hobbyists has its own flavor of drama. So, you know, I feel like people would fight over different things. Maybe, I don't know. Well, they do have stamp auctions and they have these blind auctions. So uh, the idea is that there's like a mystery box and you have no idea what's in it. Uh huh. And so you can bid on it, not knowing the value of the stamps that are in it kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, you're either so going to have I, a know. really, really good time with it or a really, really bad time. Like there's usually, you know, like the boat's a boat, but the mystery box could be anything. But usually there's no in between with mystery box. It's either a really good price or a really bad price. Yeah. Uh, 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 Ashley says to watch out because it's definitely a slippery slope that once you know, once you've I'm sure. tasted of the forbidden wine, it's all downhill. <laughs> the forbidden wine of stamps. <laughs> Or postcards, the other one. <laughs> oh, I can see myself getting into trouble at either the postcard or the Copic marker convention. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I feel like my family would ban me from going to that. They'd be like, you're going to spend all each other's too much money, blah, 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 blah. Oh, that's the thing is that you, know, you have to be smart about it. And, um, yeah. you know, it's the way I, I look at it, go it's like going everything. to Vegas. I'd be like, look, I never even knew I needed these markers. Right. Look how amazing yeah. these are. And, and that's the thing. Like when I go to Vegas, I go knowing that I'm going to donate my money to the city. So I don't, you know, I only take the amount of money that I know that I can spend. Right. Fair I don't enough. take any of Fair enough. Yeah, I don't take any of my credit cards or any of my, you know, ATM cards or anything like that. I just take, you know, cash in an envelope <laughs> and once I go through all that cash, then I know that I'm done. Right. And it's the same kind of thing with these kind of things. You go with a list, you go with what you're wanting um, to go and what you're looking for and you just check off your list because the temptation is real. You know, and that's that's the thing. That's exactly what you're talking about. And and you have to go knowing how much you're willing to spend. I mean, it's the same um, be- like as in a, a casino. You have your set amount of money that you're going to probably gamble away and be okay with that. And once yeah, you exactly. That limit, you know, you're then you're going to go eat some nachos or get some chicken wings or something or go do something else. So, well, the nice thing about Vegas, food is cheap because they want you to gamble. So, uh, yes. you, know, you can eat well on very little in Vegas. Uh, Pam says you can also buy Copic markers at Comic-Con. So if you're into Comic-Con, then there you go. The last thing I was at that's similar to that was um, Otakon, which um, was in the Baltimore area. And this was, my God, years back. And then I think they moved to D.C. So that's the big anime convention Um, that ended up moving to the um, National Convention Center, Chinatown area of D.C. because I think... Otakon just outgrew. They used to have it at the um, that Harborside big convention center in Baltimore, but I believe they just got too big for their britches and they outgrew that convention space. So they ended up having to move that. But that has it's been literally like years. Yeah, uh, Landy, I'm with you. I can do nachos any time of the day. Me too. Me too. That's never a bad time for nachos. Now, do you put any kind of protein on your nachos? Do you do beef or do you do chicken or anything like that? Or just have them? I just like um, I just like them smothered with cheap cheese and like pickled jalapeno slices, and then I'm good. Like that's I'm very simple. Like that's all I need. Yeah, I can do them that way uh, with beans or with you know but chicken must or whatever. Must have jalapeno because if it doesn't, it's not a real plate of nachos to me. Fair enough. <laughs> Ashley said she was supposed to go to Vegas this weekend to see Aerosmith. Aw, man. Well, I mean, on the bright side, I guess everybody's having FOMO because, but you, you know, it'd be one thing if some folks weren't able to travel anywhere, but I don't, everyone I know has canceled some kind of a vacation. So, you know, and the Art of the Post just joined. Hello, welcome, good evening. So Ashley, are you gonna are you rescheduling your trip to uh, was it Vegas? Oops. Yes, Vegas. Sad trombone. Wah wah. Wah wah. Yeah, wah. that is sad. Um, originally, we were supposed to go down to Disney. Oh, 
April, the week of April 20th, I think it was, like the third week of April, but... Orlando or Anaheim? Orlando. And we were going to spend a week down there, and like I had everything set, and everything was booked, and it was wonderful, and I'm like, I'm going to go eat! It's going to be awesome! And then, um, you know, all this happened, and so like, I will say Disney had, honestly, the best customer care when it came to that whole thing and at a time when airlines were pushing back and other hospitality companies were like well we don't know if you're going to give you your money back like um they were good sports about it they were you know you know in true to disney form it was they they were very hospitable and you know they were like no problem we'll absolutely refund everything i'm like awesome so so Ashley says that we're scheduling is clear is unclear. Uh, Aerosmith canceled, not postponed. So therefore, she got her money back. Well, that's good. That's good. At least they refunded you. But still, yeah, so, having vacations uh, canceled does suck. Uh, so I want to go back to Landy. Landy, what kind of pizza? Landy's talking about pizza, nachos, and pizza. So what kind of pizza? And I, I'd like to hear what everyone's favorite pizza is. One and two, if pineapple belongs on pizza. Number. Hmm. I am a pepperoni and black olives thin crust pizza person. My ideal pizza has um, black olives and extra cheese and, believe it or not, anchovies. Ooh, gross. I don't do anything from the sea. <laughs> crustaceans, you know, any of that. No seafood? No seafood. <gasps> Is it just you don't like the taste of it or? Well, it's a long story, but uh, <laughs> just to let you know, you know, my life is a long story. But uh, Landy says and Pam both like veggie pizza. Okay. That's good uh, Ashley says that um, pineapple belongs on the pizza with ham or Canadian bacon. I agree. Ah. Patty says uh, Philly cheesesteak. Uh, with gravy instead of tomato sauce, ham and mushroom and sausage for Jim, goat cheese and tomatoes. Yes, I love goat cheese on pizza. I've never had that. It is phenomenal. Now we're getting really expensive. Chicken <laughs> artichoke pizza. That oh man, you guys are making me hungry. They all sound amazing. And Pam says she misses a good New York City calzone. I miss walking around in New York and going to like random shawarma restaurants. And then, you know, they have that long bar where you can like scoop up the fixings and the toppings and you just kind of layer it on there and like make us make another half meal out of it. I miss that. What's the difference between a calzone and a stromboli? Anybody? A hipster Nan says she likes hers sausage, onion, peppers, and mushroom. Yum. This all sound amazing. But in answer to your question, when I was in the military, I used to jump out of airplanes. I was an aerial photographer, and I had to maintain an operating weight because of the parachutes and the gear that we had of 165 pounds, which back then was, you know, obtainable. It was doable, but I had to eat high protein, um, have a high protein diet. So I was eating sushi because I was in Japan, you know, almost three times a day, okay. either that or sashimi. Uh, just so I could, and so I just got sick of frit, fish, you know, and all things water-based, whether it be, you know, shrimp, whether it be crab, whether it be any of that stuff. So now I just don't eat it. It's just, you know, I smell fish and my stomach goes. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, my so brother-in-law we have is actually. five a... minutes left. Oh, we do? Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> my brother-in-law is a scalloper. And um, he sometimes brings us scallops from, they live south of Boston, and um, he has a scalloping license, and it, it, it's a real profession, apparently. And you have to have a special license to do it, and you go out, and you bring your nets in, and you get all the scallops. But um, we actually had them for dinner tonight. Sorry, Russ. Um, but tonight was um, seafood night in our house, so. Well, and this afternoon was bacon day, so, you know, that's what Bacon is over there in hiding. He's sulking, and he needs to stop his sulking. <sighs> well, you were eating his mother or something or not. That's what he was yelling at the top of his lungs. He was like, Mom! Mom! But anyway. 
<laughs> he's so sensitive. <laughs> Tell Bacone to stop being so sensitive. <laughs> Bill says he likes prosciutto and arugula pizza. Oh my god, that sounds like a great combo too. Uh, and now she says, mmm, fresh scallops. Nan, I don't have any pictures because the pictures I took uh, were uh, uh, very sensitive. So, uh, and they're for military purposes. But if you go to Time Magazine and look at the pictures of the Beirut bombing in Lebanon, uh, those were pictures that I took because at that time, civilians weren't allowed in the airspace above the uh, embassy there. So, uh, so those are pictures I took. I also took pictures of the Falkland Islands War. Uh, so, yeah. But I took pictures of a lot of things I wasn't supposed to be taking pictures of. So I'll let you figure that out. So I'm going to leave this last person who joined to you since I can't say it. Uh, okay. Aaron. Aaron? Sh- Ma- <laughs> I don't <Yeah>. know. <laughs> well, welcome, whoever you are. I'm just going to call you Aaron. <laughs> yeah. Hello and welcome. So here's my postcard for the evening. This is a pretty good use of my leftover scraps. And um, once again, we have the, the people in the corner with like the super intense eyebrows. I don't know why, but I really dig these. Like they're super dramatic and they're kind of funny and they're holding a dog. So technically it's a, you know, dog art. So there we go. And there's our, our joke. Why aren't dogs? I good? thought that said poop. And I thought that's a really great sticker for a dog, dog postcard. But it says pop. Oh, it says pop. <laughs> <laughs> no it says why aren't dogs good dancers they have two left feet so this was that that was that carryover joke from yesterday night so or two nights ago maybe and ashley says that's a doggone good postcard well thank you ma'am <laughs> i gotta go it find certainly is and get a mod podge it before the night is over that's a bow wow spectacular postcard using up the scraps man that's what i gotta do well, folks, it's that time of night. It uh, is. We thank you for joining us. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Uh, it makes my night. Uh, it gives me purpose to be somewhere uh, where I know others are going to be. And so uh, I thank you for getting me out of my own headspace uh, okay. and forgetting about everything that's going on for the day uh, and enjoying each other's company. So we do realize you have places to be. And thank you for spending your time with us Um it makes my day. So thank you very and much. And mine too. It means more than you guys know. It's it's awesome. So. To and tomorrow you. I'm doing a new stamp release of the Voices of Harlem Renaissance. So look for that uh, and a big announcement for looking at stamps tomorrow. Very cool. All and right. also the new uh, postcard challenge tomorrow. And is Bacon going to be on that one? I'm going to try to coax him out from under the bed. Yes. Okay. Okay. That sounds like a plan, man. Thank you guys. Have a great evening. Good night, everyone. Bye.